Hi, I'm Rocco Steno, and today Kid Lit TV catches up with Jared J. Krasovska, the creator of such Kid Lit classics as the Lunch Lady series and Star Wars Jedi Academy. And he is a National Book Award finalist for the YA graphic memoir, Hey Kiddo. Welcome, Jared, to Kid Lit TV. Hey, Rocco, thank you so much for having me over there to Kidlet TV. Jared J, and you know, I've known you for many, many years, but I don't know, what does the J stand for? Oh, so the J is for my grandfather, Joseph. Uh, you know, I was raised by my grandparents and I was my middle name was Joseph after him. His father was named Joseph. And so when it came to determining what my sort of author name would be, I included my middle initial as a way to pay tribute to my grandfather. In fact, the very first design pass of my first picture book, they removed the J from the cover. So it just read Jarrett Krasowska. And I said, no, 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 no. Like it's, it's Jarrett J. Krasowska. And they tried to argue with me that, you know, your name is so long already, we should try to shorten it. And I said, well, what's one extra letter and, and, <laughs> and a piece of punctuation that the J is there for my grandfather. So that's, that's where uh, Jarrett J. Krasowska comes from. You have been a lifesaver to teachers, librarians, and parents during the COVID uh, isolation by going online and doing things. Can you tell us about some of the things you created during that time? My New Year's resolution in January of 2020, as we're entering what we thought would be an epic brand new year, uh, was to do more webcasting and more video work. And uh, so I had uh, this space set up to record uh, in January, and and I was starting to play around with doing live webcasts, and which I'd been doing for years, but sort of making them a part of my regular routine, like once a month or once a week. And when everything shut down uh, in the middle of March of 2020, I realized that I I wanted to help in some way. You know, I have, I have friends who are nurses and doctors who are, who are delivering bread. I have friends who are managing uh, grocery stores and, and keeping the essential businesses up and floating and letting everyone continue to, to live their lives as best they could. And so I realized that my contribution could be to help fill some time for the kids and their caretakers. So I went live every single day for a couple of weeks. I did daily episodes, like every weekday for three months. Uh, and I just, it was called Draw Every Day with JJK. And then we just did that. We just drew every day and it sort of became like a, a masterclass in, in how to illustrate everything from color theory to character design. You know, I took summer 2020 off and then I brought it back as a, a, a twice a week show in the, in the fall. If people want to see some of the Drawer Every Day with JJK, they can find those episodes where? Well, everything will connect to my website, which is studiojjk.com, uh, but they're all on YouTube, and that's and my handle on YouTube is Studio JJK. You created that for uh, younger children, but you also created a, a web series for young adults too, right? That's right. So summer 2020, you know, summer is... is you know, convention season, there's ALA, there's Comic-Con. Uh, and that's typically the time where I really get to commune with my graphic novelist friends. And I was just feeling a real hole in my life from not being able to see them face to face. And, uh, you know, I, on Draw Every Day, I was bringing in guests to just do quick drawing demos. Uh, but people watching wanted to know a little bit more about some of these folks. And now, since Draw Every Day was, was really for all ages, but then you know, became more something that the seven to 11 year olds out there were, were really into. Uh, I created Origin Stories, which is a show for teens and adults, where I talk to my graphic novelist friends about how they came to be. Like, what is their origin story? Like, what do they read as a kid? What do they draw as a kid? How do they get published? What, what excites them? As you probably know too, Rocco, no matter how well you know somebody, you know, when you interview somebody, it's way different than just having casual conversation when you happen to run into them. So who were some of the people you've had on Origin Stories? So in the fall, we did a 10 episode run. Uh, we had Rena Telgemeier, Jerry Kraft, we had Mike Corrado, we had Maya Kobabe, uh, we had Robin Ha, who is, is newer to the field, uh, Jean Luen Yang. Yeah, I figured if I crafted a, a, a small group of 
10 people would feel much more manageable versus having it, you know, continue endlessly. And and so I'm hoping to, you know, later in 2021 to put together a list of another 10 friends or new friends and, and interview them and bring the show back. So we have a clip to show our viewers of uh, origin stories. It's not just about the winning and the losing. It's about the stakes. It's always about the stakes that you set up before the game. Mm. And that and, and a, a, a loss or a win is just it's almost like testing a hypothesis. So if Biddy is having this huge internal conflict about coming out to his father and his father not supporting him, and then his father is in the stands at the game, all of that external stuff, all of that internal conflict plays out. So if he loses that game, what does it mean about his relationship with his father? If he wins that game, is, is there a resolution between him and his father? That's It's just adding context to a win or loss. So it's never just like, Oh, they got enough points. <laughs> yeah, right. You can watch ESPN for that. So, Jared, where were you? That doesn't look like uh, your studio. You know, this is where I shot draw every day with JJK, right? So, all ages, mostly centered on the on the on the middle grade readers. But since since origin stories was uh, is is uh, meant to be for an older audience, I didn't want to be in the same environment, right? So, I didn't want visually for younger viewers to see this environment and click and then maybe come across more mature subject matter. So I'm, I'm in this tiny room that I'm actually in my basement. Uh, there, there are no windows in this room. Uh, in fact, the, the ceiling is so low that I could, I could touch it without even going on my, my tippy toes. And so really this room was just a storage room. It's where my flat files are. And so where I shoot uh, origin stories is just on the opposite side of the camera. So I'll have to, I just reset the room and I, put the lights around, I bring the mic around, and then I shoot the show over there. Jared, can you show us around? Let me take my camera off of the tripod here. This is the space uh, where I'm filming draw every day. And again, like I said, look, I'm not even going to go on my tippy toes and I could touch the ceiling, it's small. Uh, and I have my books, I have photos of my family. I have uh, all of my old sketchbooks. I have the French edition of Hey Kiddo, some of my childhood toys right there. When we flip around here, these are all of my flat files. So this is where I store all of the art for all of my books. In fact, oh, you know, before I show you that, I have to move this. This is how I get my overhead shots. This is a clothes rack with a selfie stick duct tape to it. And I'm gonna open up one of these flat files for you and we'll see what we can find in here. Okay, so this is from uh, my picture book Annie was warned, which was published in 2003. This essentially is my picture book side and my graphic novel side. So let's see what we have here. Some old stuff from Punk Farm. And when I move over here, this is where I film origin stories. This tapestry that was your classic 80s school photo background. I have some of my old Nintendo games and old street sign, my grandfather's old eight tracks. And that's where my kids play very messy play spaces right over there. And there you have it. Some of our uh, younger viewers may not know what that uh, contraption is hanging on the wall behind you. Uh, oh, this thing, right? this is a, it's a pay phone. This is a, it's an actual working phone. Uh, it's not plugged in here because we don't, we don't have uh, a phone line down here but I thought it made for a, a, a good gag. So when I have on Draw Every Day with JJK, when I bring in guest authors, I pretend like I'm calling them on this and that's how I bring them into the feed. Uh, and uh, just something, it's a little something to keep uh, the younger viewers wondering what's happening. That fellow that's on your shelf behind you, the gold fellow, who is that? That is uh, the Harvey Award for uh, book of the year uh, after Harvey Kurtzman, who founded Mad Magazine, uh, and I won this last year, uh, 2000, well, rather 2019 at uh, New York Comic Con for Hey Kiddo. And you were a finalist for the National Book Award. Your audio book won an award too. Yeah, it, it won the it won a couple actually. It won uh, an Audi uh, for uh, young adult for young adult audio book of the year. Uh, and then it also won the Odyssey Medal at American Library Association, uh, which was incredibly rewarding because it's, you know, you don't 
typically, well, at least not before, you saw a lot of uh, graphic novels being turned into audiobooks. Uh, and Paul Gagne and everyone at Scholastic Audio brought me in, not just as a consultant, but as a, I was a co-director and co-producer and a narrator on that production. And we, and pretty much everyone who is surviving came in and voiced themselves. So old teachers, friends, family members, you know, all, all came in and uh, I, I coached them and directed them into giving narration for the audiobook. So people who are non-performers uh, getting a good performance out of them. And there's a companion uh, book to Hey Kiddo. There's a book called Sunshine, which was originally a chapter in Hey Kiddo. This one page is the entirety of the uh, a second book that's uh, 230 something pages long. So this, this story line was originally a chapter in Hey Kiddo, uh, but it was a chapter that's getting longer and away from the original uh, through line of Hey Kiddo, and it, it became a book in and of itself. And, uh, both, both the graphic memoir and an audiobook as well. Hey, Jared, can you give us a sample of what you do on Draw Every Day? Uh, of course, Rocco. I'd be, I'd be delighted to. You know, when, when I'm teaching uh, cartooning courses, I love teaching about uh, emotions, how to draw emotions on a character. And, you know, right off the bat, I say, you know, if you just draw a circle... Don't worry about the ears or the hair or the neck or anything. You just draw a circle. And to, to be an illustrator, you also kind of have to be an actor. You know, but instead of a stage, you're inhabiting the characters on the page. So if you smile real big, right? You smile real big and, and feel and sense what it does to your face. You get a little line underneath your eyes because your smile opens up so broadly that it pushes your cheek muscles up. So I draw... The two eyes with a line underneath, and right then and there, it already looks like the character is smiling. The character is smiling with their eyes, and then I'll draw that big smile. I'm not even going to draw the nose right now. And so that, that's how I draw a happy face. I'll start again with another blank circle. Now, if you're really angry, Right? When you're really, really angry, your brows get crossed and it wrinkles your forehead. You get a little line right there where your brows meet. And when you're very angry, you tend to tilt your head down and look up towards the source of your anger. So when I am drawing an angry character, I have those brows come down and cover the top part of the character's eyes. And maybe they're so angry that they are grinding their teeth. But of course, what about when you're really sad? A circle. And when you're really sad, your brows go arch up and you're and you maybe you're looking down because you're so upset, but you don't just frown, you pout. So that bottom lip comes protruding out. And maybe there's a little tear. But of course, what about if you're really scared? If you're really scared, your eyes grow really wide. And you can see the pupils right there in the center. If you can see the white all around the character's eyes, that makes the character look scared. And one more, if you're tired. If you're so tired, and you just don't have the energy for anything. None of your muscles want to work. And that includes the muscles in your face. So you're going to be fairly expressionless. Your eyelids will not have the energy to open fully. So now here's the thing. Let's go back to the beginning. It does not matter what my character is, right? My character could be human. But it could be that my story takes place on a farm and my, my pig is really happy. So I'm going to keep all of these tenants I talked about with the, with the facial expressions, but I'll just add a snout and some ears. Perhaps my story takes place in the forest and my character is a bear who is very angry. 
Again, I'm going to have those brows stay cross, give some fur, and add some ears. But some, some animals have appendages that, that we don't have. And you could use those appendages to help the character emote, you know, to show expression. So if you're drawing an elephant, right? An elephant has that big, long trunk. So if the, if the elephant is sad, I'm going to have the trunk droop down and the ears droop down. If my elephant is scared, so Rocco, if you could, if you could turn your arm into an elephant trunk for me, and if you were a scared elephant, what might happen? Your trunk might get all wavy. And of course, uh, what if a bunny rabbit has two floppy ears? If you could give me two floppy ears, Rocco. And if you were a tired bunny, those those ears would droop down. So let me share my drawing. Here's my surprised or scared person. Here's my happy person. And I'm not sure what this guy is. Is he uh, mad, maybe? Is, this is the angry person. Beautiful, here's the beautiful thing about being an artist. There's no right way or wrong way to draw and everybody has their own way to interpret things. So however you drew those characters, that was the right way for Rocco to draw those characters. We're so excited here at Kid Lit TV that we've included your playlist on our site so people that come to Kid Lit TV can have access to your videos. So we're really excited about that. Kid Lit TV and Jared would love to see how you're using his resources at home or in the classroom. So why don't you post your photos and drawings using the hashtag DrawEveryDay. You can find all of my videos on my website, which is studiojjk.com. Again, that J, that middle initial is there. So if had the publisher, had I gone with what the publisher said and omitting that middle initial, the JJK would not have made sense to, to anyone. But at any rate, at studiojjk.com, it'll send you to draw every day with JJK on uh, YouTube that is uh, dedicated for kids. And then there is a whole separate YouTube for origin stories which is for teens and adults. It was fun catching up with Jared Joseph here on Kid Lit TV. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you, Rocco. Before we go, what's your middle name? Oh, uh, Anthony, of course. <laughs> Rocco Anthony, yes. <laughs> oh, Rocco Anthony, if there's any doubt. <laughs> it was great to see you, Rocco Anthony. So remember, until next time, read a book in any format.